Welcome, welcome. And in this talk, we're going to look at some things that have caught my attention in the news today on Wednesday, the 4th of March, and what they're telling us about the development of this pandemic. Now, Italy, uh, the cases are going up. Death rate's quite high in Italy. I could do a quick percentage of that, but it's looking high-ish at the moment. Maybe you can work it out for me. Uh, now, the Italians are doing quite well on testing. Um, they've, looked, they've carried out about 20,000 tests. So testing is getting geared up in Italy, which I'm pleased to uh, hear. Now, um, all schools and universities are closed now all over the country. So having this outbreak started in northern Italy, now the Italian government has decided to close all schools and universities in the country. And it's advising against events, all mass gathering events, everything as far as I understand. So that's the situation in Italy, but good to see they're taking these measures to facilitate social distancing. Now, the United States of America, officially they have uh, 128 cases, nine deaths, and they've done hundreds of tests. Now, this is just absolutely unbelievable. A country the United size of the United States and the tests can be counted in the hundreds. It may be there's evidence to suggest that this virus has been circulating in some parts of the United States for some weeks now. And yet they've managed to do a few hundred tests. The Centre for Disease Control <clears throat> have dropped the ball on this one. Re really, the level of testing in the United States for such an advanced, sophisticated country is... It's just appalling. It's unaccept unacceptable. But th that, that's what it is. So that's where we're at. Anyway, the, the Centre for Disease Control say they now seem to realise this. And they're talking about producing a million tests for next week. Let's hope that's the case. Pity about the delay. Now, I'm afraid I might be guilty of giving you some information that was wrong on a previous video. I had said that people are being charged to be tested in the United States. Now, even though there's very limited amount of testing been done, I've been reliably informed that people have not been charged for testing. So it just shows how easy uh, misinformation is to spread around. We always need to keep corrected. So my apologies for misinforming you on that. It looks like no one has been charged for testing in the States, which I'm pleased to hear. South Korea. Situation in South Korea. Increase of 500 cases since Tuesday. That's only yesterday, isn't it? So quite a lot of cases now in South Korea. Now, this, I think, is probably the worst news I've given you today. And uh, probably the worst news I've given you on these uh, video series, arguably. And it's this. 60% of the transmission in South Korea is now adjudged to be community spread. This means there's no epidemiological link back to a source cluster or a case zero or an index case. It's simply spreading from person to person. So people get the disease and they don't know where they got it from. This is what we've been dreading for a long, long time. And the South Korean authorities, which are excellent and very efficient, have estimated that 60% of cases are community transmission from person to person, from peer to peer in the community. Which of course means it's going to be remarkably difficult now to stop. 33 deaths in South Korea. Uh, now the Koreans have done very well on testing. They've done 100,000 tests. They have drive through tests. They're really getting their act together on testing. Uh, and the United States, we believe, is going to get its act together on testing next week. So that's good to see. Uh, they're increasing mass production, although we've bumped an hour about masks on this video before. They mobilised almost 10 billion US dollars for economic needs. Now, India. 28 cases in India. Now, India have restricted the exports of 26 generic drugs. Now, what happens is a drug company will develop a drug... And I think it's for 15 years they have a patent, something like that. They, they have a patent on it for 15 years or so many years. I think it's 15. And uh, that means they can only sell it 
and that's good in a sense because it means they get their money back because the re research and development for drugs is very very expensive but then when they go off license then it's just a molecule and anyone can make it they're not hard to make and the indians are particularly good at making this a lot of the drugs i've uh, i've bought in the past have been manufactured in in india um I used to buy a lot of drugs for export and they were nearly all manufactured in uh, india antibiotics uh anti-parasite drugs, aspirin, paracetamol, codeine, all the common drugs, that's acetaminophen in the States, all the common drugs they're making in huge amounts and very cheaply. But now they're restricting export of these because they think they're going to need them for their own population. Now this is concerning. So the Indian government is restricting export of some antibiotics because they think they'll need them for their own population. That's bad news. And as well, it means we might be struggling to find our antibiotics for a period of time. That's bad news as well. So that is a very concerning piece of news. That the Indians think they need all their antibiotics at home. Not that the antibiotics will kill the virus. We know it won't. But the antibiotics can treat the secondary bacterial infection. Which can be a life-threatening complication of the viral infection. So you get the viral infection that damages the respiratory system and that lets the bacteria in. That can cause severe bacterial secondary infection and without antibiotics that can be life-threatening. Now I don't want to cause any panic here. We've got a lot of other places of getting antibiotics but it really concerned me that the Indians have not. They think they want to keep them all uh, in the country at the moment. Um, bad for those two reasons. Now China decreased number of new cases for three days. And the Chinese are carrying out 1.5 million tests per week. Excellent level of testing. They're producing lots and lots of uh, tests, which is good. Social distancing has achieved the reduction in the number of new cases. Because as we looked at on the last video, this virus can only reproduce inside human cells. We separate the human cells by separating the people. And therefore we prevent the spread of the virus and this virus will die out if we if we do that. Europe. Um, European Union offers in Brussels. Someone came back from a trip to Italy. Probably some work jolly or something. Important business meetings in Italy, I don't know. Uh, they had a meeting with 30 other people. So they went from presumably Brussels to Italy caught the virus in Italy, came back, had a meeting with 30 people, then went off sick, tested positive. This is what happens. People are pre-symptomatic and can spread it in the pre-symptomatic phase. And I believe, don't quote me on this, but I think one or two of these aren't feeling very well at the moment and are waiting testing of some of the 30 that were at this meeting. Now, Ireland has got this second case of coronavirus. And I'm, I'm not picking on Ireland here. I mean, it's um, not picking on it. And I'm a great admirer of St. Patrick, one of the great patron saints. Um, but they plan to go ahead with a St. Patrick Day festival on the 17th of March. That's going to mean crowds. It may mean a certain amount of drinking. If there's drinking, then there's increased risk of various forms of physical contact between individuals um, but they've decided to go ahead it's not for me to say they're wrong <clears throat> they might reconsider let's hope they reconsider that Iran more cases being reported again we know there's many more 8% of the Iranian parliament uh, deputies or whatever you call them MPs have been tested positive. Um, apparently quite a lot of the Iranian government have decanted to a particular uh, five-star hotel in Tehran. Um, I don't know if they realise they're at risk of infecting each other there or not. But apparently that's what's happened. Uh, the shrines are still open, but the emails I've got from Iran are remarkably encouraging. So the shrines are still open um, because people can go there to be healed according to their local beliefs. Um, although my personal view would be that a, a religious shrine would not have any antiviral properties. But that, that's their belief. I'm not, I'm not criticising anyone's belief. Um, 
but my, my understanding is that shrines have no antiviral properties. But anyway, so they're still open. But the really encouraging news is that ordinary people are travelling less and not going to them as much. So the news seems to be getting out to the ordinary uh, citizens in Iran. And even although there's been uh, delays, shall we say, in, in official responses, um, the great people of Iran are starting to take responsibility for their own health. And I wish them well with that. Now, my country, the United Kingdom, as we said, two cases in my city today. I don't know whether they're part of that 53 or not yet. I don't think they are. So that could well be 55. Yeah, we're not doing brilliantly on testing, are we, in the UK? Well behind other countries in, in uh, some testing there. Uh, tw tw 12 people uh, recovered. OK, uh, now my government's talking about the containment phase, which we're in now, although we are talking about moving on to the delay phase. So we're kind of in between the two at the moment. But the measures that we take to contain will also help to delay. So it's kind of a bit of an academic distinction in some ways. But delay means that we've failed to contain. And I think in this country, as in several other countries, we're about to fail to contain and that means there will be community spread. So when we fail to contain, there will be community spread, person to person spread. Then the aim becomes to delay. We'll have failed to contain all the cases. Research and treatment we're working on, at least I hope people are working on it, and then mitigation of the, the impact. Now the National Health Service has declared a level four emergency, that's as high as it goes. So the NHS is on the highest level of emergency alert. Uh, the, the government's told hospitals to be modified to deal with infectious diseases. Um, we don't have many isolation facilities in district general hospitals in the UK, unfortunately. So that are being uh, modified and thought about now. Let's hope quickly. Uh, the government has, has asked people to review uh, critical care unit and uh, high, dependency, high dependency units to try and increase capacity. Critical care really means that people would be um, ventilated, mechanical ventilation, which people can need for a few days to get them over the worst part of a severe lung problem. High dependency is, is intensive medical and nursing care, but usually short of uh, ventilation. They don't put a tube. Ventilation, you get a tube down or you get a tracheostomy. You are artificially ventilated. That would be... Uh, that would be CCU, um, where, whereas um, I was called ITU, intensive therapy units. This is all the same thing, critical care unit. Uh, HD, high dependency unit, HDUs. These normally look after poorly patients short of ventilating them. So, for example, patients with severe infections or people that needed large amounts of supplementary oxygen or people with other comorbidities that needed managed. So... Hospitals are being reviewed to try and increase the capacity of those things. Um, now, they can probably find space to do that. They can probably even find some equipment, but finding the expertise is a little more difficult. The NHS is enc encouraging uh, video consultations with doctors. The worst thing we want to do if we've got this virus is to go to a stuffy doctor's waiting room and cough over everyone. Um, COVID-19 has become a notifiable disease. Now, this is a statutory legal thing. And uh, it means we doctors and nurses uh, have to report it. And it's got various legal implications I don't fully understand. But it's a statutory uh, notifiable disease now. Now, um, <clears throat> there's, a, there's, a, there's a procedure called extra corporeal membrane oxygenation. That is basically where the blood's taken out of the body, oxygenated and put back. It's like a lung bypass machine. Uh, only used occasionally. I've never, I've never used one. We haven't got one in in, in my centre. Um, they tend to be in regional centres, and apparently we've got fifteen in the country. So fifteen in the country. Uh, critical care unit beds. Apparently we've got five thousand. This is the latest figure we get: five thousand nine hundred twenty-one. And in the UK as a whole, we've got one hundred forty-two thousand hospital beds, but that includes learning disabilities, mental health. Uh, and uh, hospitals which won't have the facilities or the expertise to treat the acutely uh, ill. 
This is why it's so important to contain and delay so we can spread this out and get less people sick all at the same time. So we can look after our poorly people. Because if they come all at the same time, from the figures I've just given you, it's going to be challenging. Now, just a few quick question and answers. Um, people are always asking me about medications. Um, I've got asthma. Should I carry on taking my inhaler if if I get the you know, I get the infection? Don't ask me these questions. I don't know you. This is a question for your GP. Even if I was the best um, pharmacological pharmacological person in the world, I still couldn't answer these questions because it's. They have to be answered by the doctor who knows you and knows your condition and knows your history. So if you're worried about this, then ring 111, ask for advice or whatever helpline you've got in your country and ask your doctor what you should do in your particular circumstance. What is best for you as an individual? Don't take advice on medical matters from people that aren't your own personal healthcare providers because we can't, you simply can't, you don't know the history, you can't give advice. It can't be done. This is the problem with some of these um, dodgy sites that you see on the internet. They'll say, do this or do that. You know, um, professional healthcare providers don't do that. They wouldn't give generic advice like that. It's, it's, it's just not what we would do. So if you're worried about the medications, I fully understand that. Ring your own doctor and say, look, I'm on my asthma inhalers. I'm a bit worried about this. What shall I do if or shall I, you know, just ask your doctor what to do. Now, I've had quite a few questions from sewage workers. Are they at risk? And I don't have data to answer that, but we do know that the virus is excreted in stools. For sure. We do know that stools go into the sewage system. So I would think that if there was a lot of cases in the community people with the virus would be excreting the virus in their stools and that would get into the sewage system. Now, I'm open to data to prove me wrong, but that's my thinking at the moment. So is there a risk to sewage workers? I would have thought so. I would have thought so. So hopefully the sewage workers, occupational doctors, will be getting on that question now and giving a, default, a more definitive answer. So if you're a sewage worker... Uh, or work in drains, get onto your occupational health team and say, look, what, what is the situation here? That's why we have occupational health teams, to, to answer exactly these type of questions. But it would be a concern unless we get very convincing reassurance to the contrary. Uh, will the Olympics go ahead on the 24th of July? It's a common question. Let me rephrase that. Um, do you think it's safe? Do I think it's safe for 600,000 expected visitors from infected countries all around the world, or potentially infected countries all around the world, to fly to another country which is infected with COVID-19 virus. Does that uh, paraphrase your question? Now, just to finish this video, let's put it on full screen. There we go, got that. Anytime your hands might be contaminated, there you go. Stay safe.